As always guys, this is just for entertainment purposes only, this is not financial advice. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to share with you guys on this video how I decide to buy a certain stock unlike what some might uh, think. I am not buying random stocks. Every time I buy a stock there is really a reasoning behind it. Um, and I think simply Wall Street, this is a tool that I'm using, is actually a link down below, is helping me to find the right stocks. So simply Wall Street, it has this thing called Screener. Let me, <laughs> let me just show it here. So just making it fit on the screen. There you go. So the first thing is in the Screener, it shows all the markets. But you can add your own filters because if I would remove all the filters, say I'm clicking uh, reset uh, or no, I'm no. <laughs> here, new screener. Uh, how many companies do I have? 51,559. So there's people who say, oh, I can do it without that. I don't, I don't need um, something like that. But basically nobody can scroll to 51,559 stocks and you run the risk that you're coming across either stocks that are heavily used already um, that have a high market cap so it's high popular so have bad valuations i mean all of these if you look at these all of these will look familiar to you and they're great companies of course but that doesn't mean necessarily they are the best price companies and as a retail investor you have the option to invest in a different type of stock that other that maybe hedge hedge funds have hedge funds they have to invest in the bigger type of stocks but you can invest also in international stocks and in stocks that are companies are much smaller although i do like a minimum amount of market market cap so i can put my own filters and that helps me really slim down the the list of those 51,000 stocks so what do i do filter by market here the markets i'm filtering on they are basically for a large part just the markets that i can invest in in my broker so it, it's mainly europe it's uh, us canada australia unfortunately japan is a little bit too complex and just like other good countries that I usually would invest in and I'm thinking about Chile even South Africa has a few good stocks so but I'm I'm shrinking down this list I don't think I'm missing out that much um, I'm also having limited currency risk because it's mainly European markets of course but also the United States Australia but they have usually a strong currency Switzerland as well by the way and then I add some filters so first is like I said before market cap I would like the market cap from 100 million it's kind of protecting me a bit from too volatile stocks although yeah why not invest in a smaller company but yeah the you you will probably pay more than it's worth than stock is worth when you're buying a smaller company and you'll probably sell it for less than it's worth so if you buy it you need to really be sure if you buy a smaller company second value i like companies that are valued correctly that are valued nice so i say at least 50 percent undervalued now i'm going to get criticism on this uh, because it's just the valuation at wall street bets um no not wall street but simply wall street is giving it to it and yeah that's right uh, this is correct that is the valuation that simply wall street is giving to it but at least they're consistent so you can compare between two stocks purely based on the numbers, purely based on their valuation, is something better valued than another. And the PE, um, the PE, why? Yeah, it's one of the most objective things, and I think um, it's better probably, I prefer PEs that are not too excessive, to be honest. But if you like growth stocks, you can increase this to all the way to 50 if you want, but this is what I'm doing. And then the future growth estimate. So here I would, I want growing stocks. So the SP 500, it performs at what you, you're expected about seven or 8% gain per year. And so 
if a company is not growing, then over the long term, that will probably be your return. But if it's growing 6% over the long term, that will probably be your return. So I do want companies that grow. I'm putting it to 6%, but you could also put it a little bit higher, depending on the growth you want. Of course, simply Wall Street only estimates it for the next three years. So it's not because it's growing now that it's going to grow uh, three years after that. But that should, this is just something to get you started to narrow down the list. Debt, uh, that's also important for me. I'm putting a max debt of uh, 105% compared to your equity. How, is that high? Is that low? Yeah, it's hard to say. And it's, it's also not, would be better debt compared to uh, free cash flow. That would be a better measure, but you don't have that here. So I'm using this. Um, unfortunately, that means some good stocks might drop out of the boat. Um, but you can also play with this if you like. Now, a let, next thing, next factor that I'm taking into account, the dividend yield. The dividend yield, I'm starting it at 1%. I would like some dividend yield. It's a proof of a more mature company. I know it's not tax efficient. It definitely has downsides as well, but it kind of helps me psychologically to hold on to a stock if you're getting that yearly dividend yield. And also if a stock would drop 90%, you always had your yield that you got it you got for all these years so that's why right now i prefer dividend stocks but if i do have one growth stock in my portfolio by the way not in my dividend portfolio i also have a lot of etfs so I don't think that i'm just investing into stocks but just if i'm doing individual investment into stocks these are the filters i use and then i get the results so let's see 462 that's still a lot, but it's a lot less than the 50,000 stocks that we had to pick out before. So it does make it a little bit narrower. Of course, I sh short by value. I am a dividend growth value investor. I like growth, I like dividends, and I like value. So that's also really important for me. And then, then comes basically the further investigation, right? Um, can, firstly, can I buy these stocks on my broker? Uh, that's that's pretty important if I can't buy them then there is little point to do a deeper investigation and secondly they are a good price they are very low price so what is the reason uh, that they are so low price so for example you have DNO it's it's pretty good price is that because the uh, oil price has gone up so much or is that because people expect a drop in oil soon I would say for me to buy an oil company at this time right now, they would also need like some plan to move away from oil and to get to better things. Uh, you have also a mining stock here, for example, GCM mining. And yeah, then you wonder, are they expecting commodities that, to go down? Is that why the mining corp is there here as well? Marcus and Millcap, more real estate related. We know that in the US, the housing market is going to a rough time. The prices are coming down, so I'm not surprised to see some real estate located here. So I, you probably you want to do two things. You want to stay away from the eye of the storm uh, and that would be uh, or stay away. You don't want to be in the middle of the storm and that would be a real estate stock right now. But at the same time, you don't want to chase hype and as oil, it went up with 500 percent. So you want to be careful with oil stocks. Uh, but for example, then here I got ATNS Austria Technology and System Technique. Actually, this seems maybe something interesting. According to Wall Street, uh, bet, uh, according to Simply Wall Street, I keep saying Wall Street bet. I do actually read it for, for entertainment, guys. Uh, so, <laughs> um, yeah, they, it is really entertaining to, to read the memes and people posting about their bets that they're making but I've never gone there to take investment advice. And unfortunately, most of the stocks I invest in are not on Reddit. This is actually a good sign for a stock that you're buying if it's not on Reddit. So um, then you can do a little bit of a deeper investigation. So here it's trading at 93 below our estimate of its fair value. Earnings are forecast to grow with 36%, so almost 40%. That means in two years, 
its earnings will grow. Uh, its earnings will double. So its PE, <laughs> uh, let's see where its PE is at. It's 19%, 19, so in two years it could be at 10. If the analysts are correct about the growth number, it's also giving a dividend, a really small dividend, of course, we can see. But on the other hand, yeah, it is big enough. And if the earnings are going to double, it's going to be over 3%. Some people, they will not invest if it's over 3%. I look at the potential growth of the dividend. There is a dividend and it could double, maybe even triple in the next years, depending on what the company decides. So yeah, and this company, what does it do? It, it basically, it creates uh, all kinds of hardware, uh, also like uh, chips, SSD. This is basing on these numbers. This should allow you to make a decision if you want to do more research. What's the reason the stock is down or that it's cheap? Look, when you look at here, uh, the history of the stock, especially the last year, it's not really been sold off. So that means it's not cheap because the price went down a lot. It's cheap because the earnings went up. And then the question, will that earnings remain <laughs> so um, but here you see even consensus forecast updated and simply wall street you can see all that so they see they are raising guidance this is something i like to see raising guidance another not a few things you can see here um if there's insider selling or buying so i like buying i don't see any signs of insider buying here um i can go a little bit down Oh, view full report. We want to see the full report. So there is, has been no insider buying or selling. The ownership, it's a lot of institutions, but actually more general public than I expected, considering when you look this stock up anywhere on YouTube, on Twitter, on Reddit, you don't find it. So I'm surprised to see almost 50% being owned by the general public. Now, Pretty much everything uh, you can you can look at the detailed growth forecast, especially the free cash flow is important right now. It is negative, um, but that's probably because they're doing investments. Uh, because the next next step for me, after looking into this company, would be to go to the earnings. Which uh, surprise for this company, I already did it, and uh, to find out why their free cash flow is like that. And one of the reasons is they're building extra factories. Guys, this is a huge supplier from hardware. I found this company thanks to Simply Wall Street. They're supplying also hardware to uh, Apple. So <laughs> Apple is one of their customers. So if Apple is going to do well in earnings, then yeah, we're going to see the stock go up. So the next step for me indeed would be to go look at its earnings and see what the stock is planning for the next year so in short well i don't know if it was short but i hope you kind of got the picture on how i decide to buy a stock of course there is lots of good stocks here there's stocks that are cheap without a reason or stocks that are cheap with a reason if you like my video please like please subscribe and to all of you dividend value growth investors see you next time